What's up, guys? Tim Halster with Drag Boss Garage. Welcome back to another episode. Let's get Darren Morgan's thoughts on the Ford Godzilla 7.3, his work with Bob Glidden and the Boss 429, and AR heads. Oh yeah, I've done a co- I've done plenty of those. Yep. Um, that head has the, the, that stock OEM head has pretty good potential. I mean, it'll move 380. Um, the, the thing with that port is, uh, I will say this, Ford engineers outdid themselves with that thing. I mean, they outdid themselves. I have never seen an intake port on a flow bench with that much inertial swirl and that high a mass airflow rate. I've never seen that before. Wow. The, the way the port comes in and twists, what that does is it instills a lot of mixture motion. Vortex. But when you do that, there's a balance. You know, when that piston drop, it drops, it hands you so much energy, and I have to utilize that energy as efficiently as possible to get the airspeed up and get the airflow. So if you instigate a swirl, you use some of that energy. So the flow drops. There's no way around it. If you instigate swirl, you lose flow because the energy's got to come from somewhere, okay. right? Yeah. So you're converting that energy instead of into flow, you're converting that energy into inertia swirl in the chamber. But that thing actually moves an amazing amount of air and has a swirl intensity like I've never seen. So for, for an engine that has to operate from 1500 RPM, to 7,500 RPM, it's absolutely awesome. And the heads come with two 300 install height from the factory and a 60 millimeter cam. Wow. And it's a four, 500 bore space. If you, whoever does an aftermarket head for that thing first is going to rule because it has so much potential that, I mean, I could do a cylinder head, design a cylinder head that would make a thousand horsepower easy on that thing. <clears throat> so the answer to your question is, yeah, I love that Godzilla engine. Have you ever worked on a Boss 420 cylinder using drag race? Yeah, plenty of them. Yeah, I've sat down at a table and put five pounds of rod into each head before, welding the decks and the the valve train and the exhaust ports up. Yeah, I've had a lot of experience with them. Five pounds of welding rod. Yep. Welding that up to move everything over the exhaust port. Five, five days worth of welding. Jeez. Then they work well. That's for the stock aluminum boss. That's what I had to put in Glidden's heads. His wow. Heads. Yeah. Five well, days worth of welding. You did his, you worked for Bob Glidden. Yeah. What, what kind of what did what did you do there? What what kind of stuff did you do when you worked there? Same stuff I'm doing now. Okay. No different. You did so some of his takes. his heads, his Boss 429 stuff. You did. Yep. The AR stuff or just the original Boss 429 stuff? Both. Okay. What do you think of the AR head compared to the stock Ford Boss 429? Well, it had a lot more potential. <clears throat> Rusty was telling me they had a lot of problems breaking exhaust rocker arms. Yeah, we didn't have very good valve train components for what we were doing back then. Okay. I mean, the only, and I mean, the only reason we have the engine speed you see today, the 10, 5, 11,000 RPM stuff, is because of Jessel. If, if it weren't for Jessel, we'd still be at 9,000 RPM. Okay. I mean, and T&D, I got to mention T&D because T&D stuff winds up pretty good too. But I mean, with the bigger core cams, I mean, 70 millimeter cam, I mean, you're talking about three inches in diameter, yeah. 700 lobes, not a problem. RIP, Dan Jessel, another legend lost. Stay tuned to Drag Boss Garage, where you're always seeing and learning something new.